Good evening, good afternoon, and good morning um, to everyone. It is a pleasure to have you here, and welcome to Women's in African Power um, WIAP's Increasing Connection series. My name is Ana Rojas, and it's, uh, like I said, it is a pleasure to be today um, together with you and with two amazing um, women. Um, we want to thank you and the participants and the panelists for being on board, and also we want to thank a Power Africa, a U.S. government-led partnership coordinated by USAID for uh, making YAP and its Increasing Connections webinar series uh, a possibility. Before we get started with today's conversation on amplifying your personal brand through networking in the energy sector, um, I wanted to guide you through a few uh, virtual housekeeping matters, so stay tuned. Uh, first, as you've seen, um, as you've noticed, the participants are kept on mute during the webinar, and this is to avoid disturbances uh, with background noises. However, this doesn't mean that you are expected or that we want you to keep quiet, quite the opposite. We would really like to encourage you to use the chat function um, to talk with us and particularly um, with our panelists for today. Um, you can find the chat function towards the right, uh, top right side of your screen. It is a box and uh, my colleague Maria Preble, who's behind the scenes helping this all happen, um, is going to be collecting, um, collecting your comments and questions. So please do feel free to start sending us your comments and questions as soon as you have them. Um, Maria is also um, in a position to help you if you have some um, technical difficulties uh, or if you have additional questions uh, with regards to uh, women in African power or the topic that we have at hand today. Um, after the webinar, we will be making uh, some handouts available to you, including some tips uh, for networking and a couple of exercises to help you um, in, in being, becoming more effective networkers. And finally, because this is a question we always get, um, yes, we are recording this webinar and the presentations together with uh, the recording would also be made available to you um, at a later time. Um, now I want to get started uh, with today's presentation. If you're joining us, you know um, that Women in African Power has become one of the convening places and possibilities for uh, the sector. Um, we are very happy to say that we right now, right now have more than 700 uh, members in the network that um, they stem from uh, from women in very different from uh, very different backgrounds. So we have members working either in national utilities, in the energy finance sector, as NGOs, as engineers, and you will see also that women um, also investing in other women. So that the numbers grow in this sector. Um, the sector. Here are some of our contact details. If you want to join us, continue following us, please do. And if you are new to the network, we'll appreciate if you could reach out to Denise Mortimer, whose email is um, here in this slide, so that we can uh, welcome you into the family. Uh, today, we're going to be quickly running through first this introduction. And then we're going to be hearing from two amazing uh, women, Ms. Rose Mutiso, who is the co-founder and CEO of Mawaso and um, Institute, and with Sandra Tererai, who's the founder of Tangana. Um, because we want to make this a more lively conversation, the format is going to be very short presentations by the panelists talking a little bit about themselves and then an interview format uh, with both of them. After that interview format, then we're going to come up with some questions and answers. So that means that we will also have space to receive your questions and address your, your comments and considerations. And perhaps before we give the word to Sandra and to Rose, just as a reminder of the fact that networking is a process in which we developed 
and we use, we engage with our contacts to increase either business opportunities, to increase our knowledge, um, and to serve our community. And as I said, you will be receiving a package with information um, on networking, but most importantly on tips and exercises um, towards the end of this webinar. And as you may have also seen from the invitation, there is a possibility to uh, request for a support. Uh, part of the services that we are providing through the network is that we've managed to have some individual sessions with a professional career coach. So if you're interested in increasing your networking skills, um, do go to the link. You can find it on the page where you registered for this webinar and register. Uh, we have 10 spots and we'll be informing um, our network members um, who has been selected uh, for this opportunity in the coming days. Again, our contact details and please don't be shy. Let us know also what you think about the network and um, about this webinar series. What, every, what other topics would it be possible for us um, to discuss? And now, without further ado, I would like to introduce you to our first um, speaker, uh, Rose Mutiso, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO of the Mawaso Institute, uh, which supports the next generation of female scholars and thought leaders in East Africa. Rose is also a senior fellow of the Energy for Growth Hub, focusing on African energy sector development and the current next Einstein Forum ambassador representing Kenya. Previously, Rose was a senior fellow in the Office of International Climate and Clean Energy at the U.S. Department of Energy, the DOE, where she led DOE's engagement on technology and policy dimensions of energy access in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia, including in Power Africa's Beyond the Grid initiative. A materials engineer by training, Rose has technical expertise in the field of nanotechnology and polymer polymer uh, physics, including nanoelectronics and next generation um, energy technologies. Um, Rose, it is a pleasure to um, welcome you to the floor and we're very much looking forward to hearing from you, your experiences in networking and how, how it is that you've managed to do all of this in at least two different continents. Um, thanks so much, Anna. And, um, uh, thank you so much to all the attendees. It's wonderful to meet you all virtually. Um, I think any time women are gathered, um, I feel very energized. And even if we're gathered through the internet, some sh I, I can still feel the energy. So thank you for making the time and for taking interest in advancing your careers and um, optimizing the path ahead. So actually, um, I just only wanted to say some things about um, uh, through this introductory PowerPoint, I mainly wanted to introduce myself so you know me better, but actually Anna did a really good job of that with the bio. So, uh, goodness, uh, yes, how do I go next? Next slide. Yes, yeah, so the slide I was showing here was mainly to give you a flavor of what I've been up to for the last 10 years. And uh, so you, you can kind of see all the different ways that I've touched on the energy sector. Um, one thing I point out is I, I, this is early career. I'm still in the very early stages. I'm still learning, I'm still growing. And so wherever you are in your, in your career, um, networking and growth and career building is really, really critical and you should be doing it at every stage. So I just wanted this slide to be, uh, to give a snapshot into the fact that, you know, I've worked on energy from a very science perspective. And so when I was doing my PhD, I was really deep in the technology aspects of science. So next generation materials, um, and then I transitioned into a more policy uh, position, and this is because I've always been interested in how science interfaces with society. And so I did a postdoc, a postdoctoral fellowship in Congress, which was a very, very fascinating um, arena. And I focused on both domestic energy policy, innovate, domestic innovation or policy, and a little bit of uh, international energy policy. Um, I think then transitioned into a more government position in the Department of Energy, and Anna mentioned a little bit about the work I did there in the, in the bio. And again, this is a part technology, part policy position where I was getting a little bit deeper and focusing on energy access, which is really the development um, piece of, of energy. So rural electrification um, and that kind of work around how energy can be used to drive socioeconomic development in developing countries. And, and today, um, my main job is actually supporting women who are in this research pipeline, uh, women who are doing um, postdoctoral and doctoral research at Kenyan universities, 
not just in energy uh, topics, but in STEM and the social sciences. But again, now how I look at the energy sector and um, uh, is, is from a capacity building perspective, uh, which is something I really care about. I also have uh, two other side affiliations. Um, the main one being I do some policy research. So I'm affiliated, so I do a little bit of my research of, of energy research myself, and I produce outputs. And so I'm continuing to uh, advance my thought leadership in the sector. And I also am an ambassador for Next Einstein Forum, where I, I advocate for science and energy and 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 and, and STEM generally. So this is just to show you that um, you don't have to have a linear career, but you can still have thematic consistency across the board and still do very many interesting things and this this has been my path and everyone will have a different path but just having a kind of thematic core which is science stem energy broadly but then coming at it from different angles whether it's technology whether it's advocacy whether it's capacity building whether it's policy and that kind of thing and so um, the career can go in any direction but it's still important to keep some kind of a, a thread that connects everything so finally i just wanted to say a few things about what i'm doing now so my main job is leading this mawazo institute what I am passionate about is women's ideas and voices influencing the future of, Af of the African continent. And so we support the next generation scholars and thought leaders who will really know their stuff, who are experts in their fields, but who are also trained to be public, publicly engaged scholars. So the kind of people who are writing opinion pieces, policy briefs, who are speaking on the news. Um, this, is, this, is, this is what I'm really focused on right now. And we support women, as I said, both in the sciences and the social sciences and the humanities, uh, give them research funding, and support um, and also training in public engagement. So that's hopefully gives you a, a flavor of who I am and um, feel free to ask in the Q&A section uh, uh, questions from these different pieces of my career trajectory that may resonate with you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Rose. I deeply appreciate it. I am very sure that also our audience members are looking forward to having a more, um, a stronger conversation with you and uh, with Sandra. Uh, who is our next speaker. And Sandra Tererai is um, a food scientist, scum process improved specialist who is passionate about financial independence for women. Um, Sandra seeks to widen the reality of girls and women through exposure to powerful narratives and experiences that would ordinar ordinarily not have been a part of their cumulative life journey. Recognizing the role of STEM, STEM place in the development of African communities, Sandra is convinced that promoting entrepreneurial STEM activities for African high school girls and women from different geographies is a powerful way to realize this. Sandra currently leads her expertise to a Swiss oil and gas company in the East and Southern African region. And Sandra, <clears throat> it's always a pleasure to, to have you on board and to talk to you. And now, uh, thanks for helping us figure out other aspects of professional career um, and your involvement and support to women in the sector, and particularly girls. The floor is yours. Sandra, I have the impression you may be muted. Oh dear. Yes. Oh yes. Now we can <laughs> hear you. <laughs> Cool. Hi, guys. Um, thank you, Anna, uh, for that. And uh, thank you for your introduction, Rose. Um, it's a pleasure to be here and I look forward to a great session, uh, learning from each other, essentially. Uh, my name is Sandra and uh, Anna has uh, given um, a pretty uh, detailed overview of what I do. I'm a food scientist uh, with a lot of different interests. So I love all things STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. And um, I've worked in a number of industries and currently I'm in the oil and gas industry where I do process improvement as the regional HSSEQ manager for our East and Southern African affiliates. Uh, one thing I'm very passionate about is Taungana, for which I'm the founder, and it's a movement uh, that essentially exposes rural high school girls to um, science, technology, engineering, and math with an entrepreneurial focus. So as a movement, we believe in a generation of rural high school girls that can change the face of the continent uh, through STEM. And just to give you a sense of what that looks like in practice, um, I've uh, shown you the, I'm showing you the four main pillars that we have for our movement. 
So we essentially have a fellowship program that we run with through our high school girls across Southern Africa currently with a view to expand into um, East Africa next year. And uh, it's a one week entrepreneurial boot camp that marks the beginning of a high school long fellowship where our girls are called ambassadors get to work on entrepreneurial challenges, solving real challenges in their communities and uh, looking at ways of monetizing um, the different projects that they are working on. We also do a lot of STEM awareness in communities just to sensitize not only students, but um, the teaching community, the parental community in terms of the importance of STEM for the development of our continent and why we need a lot of young minds and especially women to be part of that um, STEM decision making table as it were. We also have a professional networking platform that offers different professionals within STEM a chance to come together, debate and dialogue on issues on how to advance STEM specifically with a view to improve um, the state of the continent. And finally, because of the um, research out, uh, because of the demographic that we work in, we come across different nuances that we always take the opportunity to bring forth in policy discussions um, or uh, discussions with private corporates around how we can further improve engagement of young females, specifically from underexposed communities into the STEM uh, world, as it were. So that's a, a slight overview of who I am and things that I'm passionate about. Thank you. Um, thanks, Sandra. Um, and now I would like to you know, get us started with more of a conversation uh, between the three of us. Granted um, that our audience is going to listen in and hopefully they'll start also sending in their questions in terms of networking. Um, and Rose, I want to start with you um, and asking, asking you what is networking to you? Why do you think it may be important to engage in networking? Um, that's a great that's a great question, Anna, and it's almost a question that um, is difficult to answer. Just because I think I don't even think of networking as a standalone thing. That is, I have to add on to my life. I think that the nature of, of work is very relational in the modern setting. And so networking is deeply embedded in everything that you do. And so if you're collaborating with your colleagues, if you're going to meetings, if you're having conversations, if you're working with other people, any aspects of your professional life that are relational, I think are part of networking. And so I, I, I try to broaden it from this. I think there's a people think of it as this kind of standalone thing where you have to go to a cocktail and give somebody your business card. But I think um, I, I find it more productive to think of networking as this just um, all en encompassing um, aspect of relational um, uh, relationships at work and around the workplace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, and Sandra, if I was to pose the same um, question to you about what is networking um, to you and how important you think it is for your uh, position within the energy sector, what would be your answer then? Um, so I would tend to definitely agree with what Rose has said in terms of it not being a standalone item, you know, that exists within its own space. And further to that, I would say that for me personally, it also extends um, or focuses strongly on the building of relationships. So for me, networking is really about how do you build relationships to mutually achieve and enhance goals and interests of whoever it is that you're networking with. Um, and, and the importance of that, um, I always find, is initially uh, there's an opportunity to harness intellectual resources with the people that you need to work with as the first step to tapping into, you know, different other possibilities and opportunities as well as other resources that go beyond um, intellectual um, um, collaboration, if you like. Okay. It's interesting because both of you have said, you know, that it's more of a process. It's 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 very much into um, 
into your day-to-day -day work. And I was wondering if there is an ideal moment um, for the networking, or if you would say, not necessarily. Is there a timing um, in which you've thought, well, this is something that really one should do uh, when engaging in networking, or this is something that I should not let pass? Does that make sense, how I'm phrasing the question? Um, yeah, so I think I see what you're saying, where um, uh, uh, there's always a... I think backing up uh, one level uh, above your question is this idea of there are different types of networking and each has a different time and place, right? And so I, if, if, if your work is, uh, okay, so if, you know, there, there's kind of productive networking, which as Sarah said, Sandra said, you're collaborating, you're, you're sharing intellectual resources, and that can happen at very many tiers. So whether it's going down the hallway to a colleague in a different, uh, working on a different part of the organization to ask a question that you've come across that you think they may know something about and you've never really interacted, you know, I think that that is kind of a low, low pressure, low tier, um, where like timing doesn't matter as much. It's, you know, you're kind of institutionally in the same, um, bound together institutionally, you know, and so that is a form of networking where you're kind of going beyond your core, uh, group of professional contacts. You're trying to meet new people and, share intellectual resources, like Sandra said. And then I think that if you're in a big event, um, a, call, uh, a reception where there are people who may be of interest to you, but you don't know each other, um, and you don't have a direct ask, but it's somebody that you think that you should know, and then, you know, I think that there's a lot of um, um, trying to read the room, trying to read the situation. Are they talking to other people? I do have an in, you know, maybe it's somebody that you recognize that we met before. And so there's, there's a familiarity and so you can get in there. And so there's, a, there's also the low pressure aspect and the timing is not as crucial. So I really do think that there's no one size fits all. It really depends on the, the nature of the networking, the nature of the relationship, um, the, the nature of the setting. Um, and you just have to get practiced in all of these different types of networking and, and, and kind of refine your instincts around it. Thank you. I think you definitely um, hit the nail on the head, especially with the different types of networking and how it may be necessary to, I mean, it's necessary to adapt. Um, Sandra, I'm wondering if there is anything that you would like to add or contribute, um, reflect on, on what Rose was just saying. I would I would just add that you know with the different uh, types of networking um, there's also I suppose um, networking that can happen passively uh, much like the examples that Rose has given where it just happens in your day-to-day -day interactions but you could also proactively seek out networking opportunities you know for specific uh, goals or intentions that you have and you specifically um, seek out networking. Um, um scenarios that best suit those those interests or goals that you have thank you and now and i've we've alerted you along the way that of course part of this uh, webinar is to ask you personal questions so that we can also learn from your experience so um i do have one of those here and i want both of you to think about your strengths and how you use those um, to network in a comfortable way. Um, so Sandra, I'm going to put you in the spot first. When you think about yourself and your personal strengths, I guess we would really want to know which they are and how you use them to, for networking. Sure. So um, if I can pick on one. Uh, so I'm very, um, I'm very much a relational person and I do great with building strong, direct one-on-one -on -one relationships with people. So for me, that's something that's a plus for me in networking, especially where I have the way I found myself, say, at a networking event. And uh, it's typically a crowded setting, talking to a lot of people that I don't know, uh, not sure what they're into and whether, you know, there's an opportunity to take a conversation further or not. Um, so just being able to naturally uh, build uh, strong relationships, direct relationships with people um, has been um, a big plus for me post 
uh, a networking introductory conversation in a crowded setting, for lack of a better way to put it. Thank you. Um, and Rose, the same question to you. What about your strengths and how do you maximize them when you're networking? This is a good question. It works on many levels because um, I guess as women, we're not usually comfortable talking, you know, um, <laughs> you know, articulating the things we're good at. So thanks for getting us more practice in that. So um, <laughs> what I, I will say is, um, yeah, I think um, just like Sandra said, I, I am comfortable in one-on-one -on -one conversations. So I, I, you know, I think I'm, I'm a very kind of personal personable person and I, 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 I relate with people well is a strength. But the other thing that uh, I think probably is one of the biggest strengths I have is I'm very broadly exposed and I think quite both laterally and vertically and I have very interdisciplinary, both educational background, but just um, in general, I think my I, I have a very lateral brain. And what this means is that in most conversations, I can find a substantive connection with the person uh, uh, with whom I'm speaking with. And so whether if I meet you and you are, you say, oh, you just got from back from Mozambique and X, Y happened, you know, usually I can grab something that kind of cements that connection. You know, I can, something will come to mind where I'm like, oh, Mozambique, I was just reading that this happened. Or did you know, oh, well, oh, well, I know this person who was working in. And, and I think that those kind of being able to pull very quickly substantive um, uh, connection points that cement and kind of take that cement the conversation, take it out of uh, we're just strangers who met and into we have common interests, we we have common knowledge, we have some connection point. I think is, is a skill that I have that I found very useful. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and I'm glad that having the two of you here is also helping you <laughs> um, to explore and and to be more uh, upfront about your strengths. So. Uh, that has definitely put a smile on my face and i know on 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 the rest of of the coordinators um i wanted to to follow on that because as as you're both very um approachable and it, it sounds like you're both very much interested in figuring what it is that you can grab in terms of a personal connection or you know a fact um that can then get, uh, begin the conversation and i would like to hear from you what other manners do you consider or what it is that you do first to build your network so this is an exercise of thinking back when you were starting with your networking how do you build your network and then how you nurture it how you make it grow um sandra could i ask you perhaps to reflect on how you start building your network and how you nurture it sure so, so I guess it's always important um, to, to appreciate, uh, you know, as has been said before, that networking isn't exactly like a once-off activity. Um, I, I like to view it as a cultivated effort by default, you know, uh, and you need to invest the time to make it happen. So for me, it's really about uh, being open to different um networking uh, possibilities, uh, whether it's an event, whether it's someone I've met at work, um, just being open to having a conversation, finding out do we have points of synergy and uh, what could uh, a connection in the future look like. Um, it could well be that you meet someone and you do not have a direct ask of them or they don't have a direct ask uh, of you, but you are in a position to connect them to something that could further their uh, their interests or they could do the same for you. Um, so I always find it's, it's important to really take the time to understand what is it that makes the other person tick and where do you find those points of synergy. And uh, also one thing that's been very real for me is also sometimes differentiating um, sort of um, immediate versus long-term uh, network um, objectives, if that makes sense. So sometimes um, it's important for me with the people I meet at different things, say we have a program running, to be very clear that um, I'm actually uh, having conversations for action and want to you know, ring fence them to actions that will actually happen in the very short term, whereas uh, other um, connections could be more long term passive conversations about let's see where this goes and how are things working before ultimately we actually um, get to do something or, or have some output as a result of that uh, connection. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Thank you. Um, and Rose, when when you the same question, when you're thinking about growing your network and nurturing it, what comes to your mind? Um, yeah, so uh, first I'd say I agree completely with everything Sandra said. Um, um, and for me, I think I, I sum it up in my mind in this kind of I, what I would call my philosophy of, of networking is is it's about giving, yeah. not receiving. So I think a lot of people think I need to network. I need to meet this person. They could help me get a job. They could help me, you know, and, the, and maybe that's why um, networking has a little bit of a, even as a term, it sometimes it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. It seems very transactional. <laughs> and as this kind of um, people, I think people in, in, the, in the common, in, there's a commonly held perception of networking as you go and you get something out of people and this is like you're angling to explore some connection. And um, I think that if you go with a giving first mindset, um, then you will receive. So if you're going to help people and find these connection points where it's you have something to bring to the table, then and then and then as part of that process, uh, you know, this is kind of a long, long, long term investment in the relationship. And then and then you get help. And so I would. I think that is always my starting point is what can I bring to the table? What value can I add um, as opposed to what can I get out of this uh, relationship? And even if, of course, the, the receiving part of it is always in the back of your mind. There's always some goal that you have. But if you go with a giving first mindset, I always find that that takes away the awkwardness that kind of warms up the conversation and that kind of thing. And then I think um, breaking that down further, you know, I, I think they're kind of like two, I, I, I think of networking in two bins, which is this kind of very productive uh, relational networking where you're working together on something, um, you're trying to, you're, you know, I heard you organizing a conference, I'd like to participate, I can, you know, speak on this panel, I can invite other people, whatever. So there's kind of like a productive connection where there's a, a back and forth. Um, and then there's, you know, what is kind of coming up more with these digital networks, which is a more broadcast type of networking where you just add someone on LinkedIn. There's nothing to ask or to give or to receive right now, but it's just kind of this long term network building. And, and one day, um, you know, it's good to have this database, database of contacts and some kind of timestamp for how you met or how you connected. And, and one day um, you may need to reach, reach out, but there's no immediate um, kind of need for that right now. So I think it's important to be doing both. A kind of productive one-on-one -on -one giving you know um, type of uh, network building and, and then also kind of maintaining this healthy database through you know the various digital platforms like LinkedIn that just keep you keep you connected to people that you know one day you may you may have um, a need to, to take the relationship to the next level mm -hmm. and I want to ask you to stay on the line and think a little bit more about or, or have a, a link to what you were just saying because we are more and more networking also on using electronic platforms and I wanted to ask um, you if you could help us understand how do you make adv take advantage of, of both of the in-person you know the more traditional um, networking channel and how do you use uh, the digital um, networks um, do you have a difference in, in, in topics and approaches? Uh, how do you go about networking in this two, at least in my head, separate worlds? Okay, yeah, so sometimes I think, and I'll, I'll just uh, caveat this by saying I haven't been as good on the digital networking and the LinkedIn, and this is something that I think I've really come to appreciate that all of us should invest in. Um, having a good network, uh, a good LinkedIn profile, and um, being uh, pr uh, proactive about adding people that you meet. And I think of LinkedIn and those kind of platforms as almost a contact list. You know, it's almost like a phone book of people that you know. And uh, you know, uh, you know, it's like your contacts on your phone. Um, it's just good to have. But then the way that you make that database of contacts useful, I have found, is actually through the people that you know very well. So for example, if I'm interested in XYZ and I look at my LinkedIn and I see that um, someone I know well that I'm comfortable asking is connected. It's like a first degree connection to somebody that I need to talk to about something. What I usually do is I then email the person that I know well, hey, I noticed you're connected to. What do you think? Is this appropriate? I'm, you know, because, you know, increasingly, for example, I have to make pretty sensitive uh, asks around fundraising, 
connection building, you know, and those are the kind of things that I just don't want to like open a message in LinkedIn and email someone <laughs> out of the blue. And so I found that LinkedIn is a really good way for me to keep a pretty robust database of contacts and people in my field and in related fields. And that contacts database is, you know, it's kind of how on your phone book, you know, it's everyone from your mom to like this person you met once <laughs> are all in the same database. And so then you can use the people who are closer closer to you to reach the people who are farther out um, and, and get advice and tips and introductions. So I think both both are really in lockstep with each other. Mm. Okay. It's very interesting to see, especially the strategy that you're following um, for increasing your, your online network. And it, it triggered a thought on, on the ethics of reaching out through, through social media and engaging and how, you know, it's sometimes not well received just to send an email without just just to connect with someone else uh, on LinkedIn without a previous um, connection. Um, so I just wanted to to leave it there because it it, it is interesting and important to to understand that their ethics um, not ethics um, ways of engaging and communicating also on digital platforms. Um, and Sandra, I wanted then to to ask you um, a little bit about this and how it is that you network digitally. Uh, but also, you know, on, a, on your day to day, on a personal um, uh, level, how do you use those different one of platform and the other, the more relationship uh, approach? Sure. So so smiling when you when you started the, the, the question uh, and, and I was thinking in my mind, I'm not sure that they are separate, the digital ah, and, okay. and the in person <laughs> in, the, in the era that we live in. Uh, but that being said, um, so so when when I think digital, it is it is a whole, you know, lot of platforms and um, you have LinkedIn, uh, like Rose mentioned, for me, it's literally about scouting, you know, being able to say, I'm looking this person up or I already have this person on my contact list. Uh, you know, am I in a position to say hello and initiate a conversation? Do I want to ask someone to uh, to be able to do that um, for me? Uh, and also beyond me taking those steps, I think it also presents a really, really great opportunity to actually also put your word out there, whatever it is, you know, whether it's as simple as saying, we have an event, who's interested, or we'd like to do this, uh, we, you know, who's who's interested. I think it, um, it creates a great platform for putting your message out there and allowing people to find you. Um, as opposed to always being scouting for uh, for for people, as it were, and then um, yeah, so that also gels with the in person, which is for me about continuing to build that mutual understanding and taking streams of those conversation or streams of that understanding into action. Um, inevitably, once again, because we are mobile global citizens always up and down, that then also is laced with um, digital um, channels, whether it's Skype to communicate or, you know, having to make simple calls, uh, that in-person ongoing communication for me is increasingly actually strengthened uh, by some of the digital uh, uh, communication channels that we have, if you like, yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks, Sandra. Um, before I open the, the the floor, the conversation to the questions that we're receiving from our audience, and I want to encourage you know the participants to keep on sending their questions. Um, I wanted to take a moment so that to ask the two of you to please reflect on a moment when your networking approach helped you achieve your professional goals in the energy sector. So if you can think about a moment, I don't know if it's a meeting, it's it's a conversation on the corridors, an unexpected LinkedIn request, something that you've said, this was a very good networking moment and because it helped me, you know, grow uh, in my career. Uh, Sandra, could I perhaps ask your comments? Okay, um, sure. So, um... Oh, well, I'll quickly give you two examples. <laughs> so essentially, yeah. uh, and, and I think this speaks to once again, networking uh, being a process. Uh, but when we started Taungana, for example, uh, the founding team is based in Johannesburg, South Africa for context. And um, about 
three months before we started Taungana, I'd been at a networking event in Oakland uh, where I met a young gentleman uh, who was working uh, in Oakland, but from Zambia. So when we started Taungana, our initial uh, starting countries were going to be Zimbabwe and South Africa. Uh, but I remembered that we had spoken about all this interest that we had for the continent. And he was very much interested in the girl child, uh, even though he wasn't in the STEM space that I'm um, passionate about. And so on contacting him, uh, he was able to then contact, uh, put me in touch with a very um, amazing young lady from Zambia who became um, our first uh, founding partner in Zambia. So we were actually able to add Zambia uh, as the third country in the in the you know in the year that we launched uh, we launched Taungana as a movement. So that for me is just a great example of how the conversation can progress uh, at different levels um, for organizations. Then um, on a corporate level or a professional level, my personal um, career, uh, I have a colleague that I'd worked with um, in an office and we just gradually got to expose each other to what we do and uh, she left the company before I did and she was actually able to, when she left the company, actually put me in touch with the opportunity that I am in currently because she was able to say this is a definite fit for you and your aspirations based on a two-year um, you know, co-working relationship that we had had prior. So that's just, um, I suppose, different angles of what networking looks like and um, how success can look like as a result of networking. Thank you. Really nice and interesting uh, examples and how, you know, you start cultivating a relationship and all of a sudden something that you were not expecting opens new doors and, and growth um, for you. Um, Rose, in your case, what is the moment, or if you have more that you want to share with us, um, that networking moment that you thought was very important in terms of your career growth? Um, yeah, this is a great question, and I mean, it's it's also a difficult question because it's, I think everything for me has been, um, <laughs> networking has kind of uh, lubricated uh, so many aspects of my career um, and relationships, being recommended by, being connected to, uh, it's hard to, to, to pull one out, though maybe I think the example I would give, I like because it demonstrates how invisible um and background networking can be like i didn't even know i was networking um i was just relating and kind of being substantive and adding value in my day-to-day -day work and and that really opened up some doors for me so how i got my job so moving from my postdoc in congress to the department of energy how i got my job at doe is um somebody uh so just uh i had kind of formed a reputation within congress as somebody who is um, kind of, you know, smart and motivated and kind of good at what I did. And I was at the time working per primarily on domestic issues, but I got to engage um, a little bit uh, on the Power Africa Bill and the Electric Africa Bill and, you know, had been kind of very helpful, put in a lot of input, you know, just had made myself available to the process. Um, and in the course of that, through some second degree connection, somebody at DOEE had had mentioned to a colleague in Congress that they were looking for someone to fill an energy access spot. And this person, you know, recommended me as someone they had observed doing good work. And so I got this email out of the blue for a meeting. And, you know, so this was kind of, kind of the cogs of networking happening completely behind the scenes that enabled me to get my job just by being somebody who is um, adding value, helping, working professionally, you know, doing my thing. Um, you know, that, 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 that garnered some notice and that helped, you know, someone that I wasn't even talking to directly rec recommend, recommend me for a job. And, and, you know, the, the rest went, went, went from there. Okay. So it is about honesty I, from what I'm hearing also, um, engagement, you know, and, an openness, um, in terms of the way that you're connecting with people, just being upfront and letting yourself be and and have that personal relationship that's helped uh basically the both of you in the examples that you've given um which is very interesting and you were saying something rose um that relates to one of the questions that came in 
because you're talking about uh, reciprocity and what it is that one can bring to the table. Um, and we have quite a number of young members in, in the network. And the question is, how can I, being a young professional, how, how can I bring something to the table um, in terms of, of that reciprocity? And I wanted to, to think if you have any tips uh, for, for these young uh, members in our community and how they can profile themselves um, better. Uh, this is actually a good question um, and I think quite telling because, you know, um, the bar, I think giving, it's not that you have to have expertise or be, um, uh, it's, it's not some kind of lofty thing that I have to be an expert who knows about everything and so people want to talk to me because I'm bringing something to the table. It's really giving in small and big ways and at your level and as you move up the career ladder then you, you know, you're able to give <laughs> At a, at a different level commensurate with where you are. And so, for example, if you're really starting out, um, I was speaking at uh, a career day at the University of Nairobi, and this really young woman came up to me and she said, um, you know, uh, I was very uh, inspired by your talk. Um, I want to be exposed more to the kind of work you're doing. Um, I don't have a lot of research experience, but, you know, I run a student group here, and so I've, you know, I've gained some experience in um, X, Y, Z, maybe let me know if you have any openings or internships, uh, you know, and so, so so for her, it wasn't really like she's not promising that she could come and to my organization and she's, a, you know, an expert in X, Y, Z. She just really was eager and keen, articulated what she would like to learn and what her current, ex, uh, her current experiences have, have taught her that she can bring and assist with if there are any openings. And so I really think um, at, at every level you have something to bring to the table. Mm. Thanks. And sometimes Sounds it's just yourself. So. Sorry? Sometimes it's just yourself. <laughs> your, time, your time, your attention, your interest, your enthusiasm. Yeah. That's good. Um, and Sandra, you work a lot with, with girls, with young uh, professionals. Um, what is your advice to them in terms of networking and opening doors for themselves? I think it would be it would be very much similar to um, to to what uh, Rose had said, and I think it's um, uh, it's possibly important not to overthink it. I think that you have inherent value that you carry, you know, by the the quality of um, of what you do. As an example, what it is that you're interested in, uh, what is it that you'd like to share, whether it's ideas, whether it's your time, uh, you know, whether it's uh, being able to connect someone to the next person. So I think it's important to be open to to the to the conversation that happens um, in different places, in different spaces, and just being able to add um, value not as an absolute event of there I have added value but it could be incremental you know it could be small things like being able to give um, someone an opinion on something they asked about being able to point them to a journal that they are saying I'm looking for information around this and if you are a research student you can be like oh there's this platform and it's got uh, this amazing research on ABC so just uh, by doing what you do uh, on a day-to-day -day basis that's the value that you can bring to the table by default so yeah don't overthink it <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, I hope we don't uh, after this conversation. Um, Sandra, I know you have to leave um, on the hour. Um, so I want to post the, the next two questions to you so we can take the most advantage of your time and your inputs. And then Rose will continue with you because I know you're a little bit more flexible uh, with the time. So Sandra, um, the first question, because you are very much at home or that's my feeling on social media is uh what kind of social media platforms do you prefer um and and, and why so um i uh, so i'm on social media mostly under the causes uh that i care about uh if i can call it that uh, so, uh, for, at Taungana, if I take Taungana as an example, we are on Twitter, we are on Facebook, uh, we are on Instagram, we are on Flickr, 
And for us, uh, really, social media presents an opportunity for us to showcase uh, what we are doing, uh, to be able to say to the communities that we work with, here's what we're doing, here's the value that we're trying to add, and who would like to be part of this journey uh, for us. So it's really a way of getting the message out there uh, and allowing uh, the network to find us. So we do a lot of you know, trying to network with different people for different reasons, a lot of looking up different people and trying to get introductions to different people. But what we've also found in the work that we do is there are a lot of people out there who want to be part of a movement like ours, who want to be part of what we are doing. So it's really an opportunity to, you know, to make those two worlds uh, of us looking for a network and a certain network looking for people like us um, to come together. So um, those are the sort of like um, platforms we use and, and why. Uh, on a personal basis, I am probably less of a social media person because um, once again, I'm very much uh, a one-on-one -on -one person. So um, I'll typically email, call people, um, and yeah, I think I think that's more or less um, how I use social media. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just out of curiosity, do you have different target audiences? for the different platforms that you use? Or do you make a distinction in any way about the platform that you're using in case you want to reach out to a specific group? Uh, I think I think some some platforms lend themselves to uh, diverse audiences by default. Let's take Twitter, for example. You know, you have uh, literally the whole world on Twitter and you can tag the different people that you would like, you know, uh, your message to to reach. Uh, it could be uh, big corporate organizations or serious organizations, for lack of a better word, or it could be individuals as well. So I think um, some platforms like Twitter are great in that sense. On LinkedIn, for example, our message is more professional because of the nature of the platform. You know, it, uh, it's, it's people with and their professional profiles and the discussions on the platform are more or less professional. So yes, I suppose in summary, we do consider who the message is for and uh, whether it is, it is tailored the right way for the platform that we're going to, to, to use to communicate it. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. Now I do have what I'm, I'm afraid might be the last question that I have for you. Um, and that is, um, I'm sorry, I just got a little bit distracted, but distracted, but um, would you mind sharing with us what networking skills uh, would you personally like to improve on? If any, and if, if and why? <laughs> I'd like to read minds to start with. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, so I think uh, networking skills I'd like to improve on um, is I'd like to to be able to influence uh, conversations to get to action quicker. Um, so. Um, I've had a lot of great successes from, you know, networking over time, uh, but also sometimes I do get a personal itch that we could progress faster, we could do things faster, um, you know, uh, that's just the, 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 the progress bone in me that's, that wants to see things happen quicker. So I would really uh, love to, you know, to be able to to unlock mutual possibilities quicker. How do I uh, bring value to the table? How do I understand the next person better in such a way that we are we are able to get to action uh, quicker? Yeah. Okay. Thank you, um, Sandra. It's been a pleasure listening to you. Uh, thanks for making time in your in, in your agenda. Uh, feel free to leave us when uh, when you need to, um, and we'll be in touch for sure <laughs> awesome thank you thank you anna and uh, thank you rose very much i'll just uh, stick around until i have to go and then i'll pop you a message if i do leave okay thank you and we'll keep you on the on the screen even if you have to leave us um <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it looks so nice. It, it feels more like we're actually having a conversation between the three of us. I'm just, it's just a shame that the audience cannot join us in the photos. Um, Rose, I want to go back to you and, and ask you the last question I asked Sandra in terms of your networking skills. Um, if you could choose one to improve on, uh, which one would it be? Yeah, so I think definitely I would like to invest more time in cultivating the, the digital platforms. So um, especially uh, platforms like LinkedIn. Um, I, um, I've i always been a purist in that I believe in like the one on one kind of productive relationship building where it's substantive and you're working on something and you're interacting on kind of common goals, and things like that. But now increasingly, I've really seen the value of um, more actively maintaining the more kind of um, broadcast like large platform um form of of, 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 of um networking so actually yeah so my I, I haven't had to manage my linkedin and those things very much and they kind of grow organically but then wanting to be more deliberate um i would also i think i really echoing sandra i would really like to um yeah close uh, uh, how do i say convert relationships into action much faster and so this is again uh, shifting a little bit from this very pure, pure view of relationship building, as we just like you know we uh, it, you know you you build relationships, you interact with each other. It's it's uh, it's not tainted with a transactional, <laughs> um, <laughs> like you know uh, a you know just like, everyone's trying to get something out of it. But then you know really being comfortable with the fact that um, it's 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 okay to be transactional and it's okay to to make asks directly and to be more direct. So I'm, I'm, I'm learning that more and more and being more comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And maybe that's a, a very good leeway onto, uh, onto another of the questions that we have, which is how do you actually follow up uh, with new contacts after you meet them? Um, what is it that you do you know, after you've encountered this person, engaged in a conversation, and then how do you follow up to get to that action, for example? So again, it really depends on, I think, the nature of the interaction. And so if I just met you, we had a brief conversation, you gave me your card, I don't really know you, I don't, there's no real um, next step immediate, then I think simply adding adding the person on, 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 on LinkedIn with a short note, like I, you know, it was wonderful to meet you at XYZ um, event, great. But then if, as Sandra said, you had uh, uh, during the conversation, you know, you had mentioned, oh, you're interested in this. Well, I know this platform or this journal, or there was kind of a little bit more of a substantive connection there. Then I would say send an email in a day or two being like, wonderful to meet you. Also, by the way, here's the link to the platform I mentioned, you know, and so you're just kind of keeping that person in front of mind and solidifying that, that connection. And, and, you know, sometimes, um, it's it's a little bit longer horizon where uh, you know it'd be months later and I, I I have to dig out a business card and email someone because you know it's like oh you know we met months ago at this thing and we're looking for a panelist who is uh, for our event who is an expert on this and I thought of you you know, you know you might remember we had this conversation you, you know so sometimes it's just uh, you it's a sliding scale and you don't know when and how the contact will come up and so you like I said at the beginning of the webinar, you really have to just get get practice in sharpening your instincts and intuition around when and how and what. But usually um, the best strategy is to build a connection point. So yeah, as I said, whether it is, um, oh, I think I know someone who might be interested uh, of interest to you, or I think I know a resource that um, you might find interesting. And then that's a very natural thing to work into a follow-up email. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I, I absolutely understand. Um, Rose, there's also a question related to, to your experience, because you've worked both in the US, but also now um, in Africa. And is there any kind of comparison or differences in approaches to networking um, that you can think of uh, from your experience? Is there something that may work better in the African context that may not work that well in the Americas, for example? Or the uh, other way around. Yes, uh, definitely. I think that I've had to. I've, it's been really interesting to see the similarities and the differences. I do think that actually among younger professionals, uh, the professional culture is increasingly similar. 
all over the world. And so the way I interact with um, early career professionals in Kenya, um, you know, in Nairobi, often I find that's not this kind of a similar global professional culture that is not um, that doesn't take so much translation or adjustment. But I find that for older, kind of more senior professional contacts, there's a the, there's a deeper sense of formality in Kenya than in the U.S. And so, for example, in the U.S., uh, something that I did all the time that was a really crucial part of my professional networking was, hey, you know, hey, John, are you free for coffee or maybe a drink after work? <laughs> you know, and this could be my boss, my boss's boss or somebody, you know, this was just kind of those. Um, I think that there's a more informal approach to networking and, you know, just quick, quick email and you get a coffee and you talk and you exchange and that's it. And and I so I found in the in, in the Kenyan context, um, those informal interactions uh, with professional contacts could work a little bit for the early career, but then for more senior contacts, you know, I write a very formal email. I ask, you know, I can come down to your office or maybe we can meet at mine, um, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm much more formal about the interaction because it's like the, 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 that professional culture is quite different. And so, um, again, there are no rules. You just have to read it because sometimes I've interacted with very senior people who are more informal than not, but then, my, um, uh, I, I always, I'm careful not to make assumptions about uh, how the people would receive uh, an informal outreach as opposed to in the US. Uh, for the most part, I felt quite comfortable um, setting up informal meetups and, you know, uh, building, um, kind of having this gray space. I call it professional friends. I think I had much more of that in the US and it was a, um, a, a bigger part of my of my circle. Okay, well thanks for sharing. It's indeed uh, interesting to see the comparisons but also the, the differences and to be aware of how you know, culture or age <laughs> may uh, affect the way that we interact with each other and that we network um, with each other. I am afraid we're gonna have to come to a close because we are running over the hour. Um, Rose, before we start saying goodbye, um, could you please share with us um or yeah uh, some advice um for women in the sector uh when they're engaging um in networking any time last uh, tips uh words of wisdom um that you would like to share with us all right this is a big responsibility let me think of what i can say that would be <laughs> shattering and, and deep. <laughs> let's make okay. it tips then <laughs> In all seriousness, I, I always say uh, when I talk to uh, especially younger women is be yourself. Uh, this is the most effective thing you can do. Just, you know, I think a lot of people feel like there's some rule book that they should be following. I should be dressed a certain way. I should be presenting a certain way. I should be saying a certain way. And, you know, I think this is what I think Sandra, both Sandra and I were trying to uh, uh, veer, veer away from this, like, these are the rules, this is what you should be doing, because there are no rules. I think that there are some kind of general principles, but the most important asset in all of this is yourself. And you have to be comfortable, you have to kind of uh, present the way that is natural to you. Of course, we can all improve in some some things. If, if we're more shy, we can work on getting ourselves out there. But, you know, not everyone is going to be naturally out there chit-chatting with everyone in the reception, and that's okay. And if, if that's not your natural disposition and you're trying to put yourself out there and you're uncomfortable, it is obvious. And so don't be afraid to be yourself. I think that for me has been my biggest asset is I am always myself. I strive to improve. I strive to stretch myself in areas that I'm uncomfortable in. But I I know that I'm not going to wake up one day and be some, you know, uh, some some person that I'm not who is kind of networking and building relationships in a way that's unnatural to me. So don't be discouraged if you don't think that, oh my God, I'm not some super personable person who is, you know, ha has expertise to, um, uh, to, uh, to give here and there and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Just be yourself and, and invest in yourself, invest in your, in, in, in your, in your expertise, invest in your professional brand just by doing the work and then the rest comes more naturally. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. I, I think it's been, um, a great uh, a tip and about honesty uh, to yourself and engagement of yourself and but still putting your you know 
going out there and, and making these connections. I think that the most interesting part of the whole conversation of, of today's webinar, at least personally, um, has been to hear from both you and, and Sandra how, how we should not think of networking as something out there that's kind of scary, but that is something that is very natural and it's a day-to-day -day occurrence. And how important that is that we maintain ourselves honest to ourselves um, in the day-to-day, -day, but also when we're out there trying to make this other connection. So it's, it's been amazing and very inspirational for me to hear both you and, and Sandra um, speak about uh, your experiences and how you approach networking and how it seems to be in, um, how how important it seems to see it um, as a fluid conversation uh, with all your professional context. So I want to thank you and, um, and Sandra, um, the both of you, to for being with us today, uh, for sharing um, your personal views and experiences with us, and um, for making this um, webinar happen. Um, I want to thank the audience for their time and their attention. Um, I want to invite you to stay um, connected with us. Uh, we will continue with um, with this um, increasing connection series of webinars. Still, uh, the next one is going to be on career development skills. So do stay tuned. Um, I want to also thank um, Power Africa for for their support. Um, just a note that we will be um, sharing the recording of today's webinar together um, together with um, some notes on um, excuse me I'm just changing screens so stay tuned uh, we'll be uh, sharing the recording of today's webinar as I said together with a package on networking and some additional information in case you want to deepen yourself in terms of what networking is, how can you um, organize and, and map your net, your own network and, and try and figure out what best to do with it, uh, how to move forward, and also um, with some tips on how to do this in a way that is comfortable to you and that is appropriate to, to you, to your personality. So stay tuned. This is all coming your way. And once again, thank you very much for joining uh, this rich conversation and making it all happen. Um, my name is Ana Rojas. It's been a pleasure to be with you today and very much looking forward to the next time. Thank you very much.